Question 7 says the spring of the pressure gauge shown in the figure below has a force constant of 1080 newtons per meter and the piston has a radius of 1.4 centimeters. As the gauge is lowered into water, what change in depth causes the piston to move in by 0.75 centimeters? So we're dealing with two equations here. The first one is the equation that relates force to the to us of, of a spring so it's uh, it's actually negative k times the change of x but uh, we're just going to say k to, to kind of simplify things keep things in absolute terms and the other one is that we could either relate for we, we have a choice on the second one so this is the first equation the second equation we have a choice we could say that uh, force equals pressure times area or we could say that force equals mass t times gravity. And here's why you can say either one. Whenever you define pressure, so pressure equals the the force divided by the area, and then you said, well, well, pressure equals mass times gravity divided by area. And so whenever you take this equation and you plug it in here, your area, so you you end up with force equals mass times gravity over area times area and these areas end up canceling each other out so we're we're going to get rid of the p uh, the the pressure equation either way so we're going to stick with force equals mass times gravity and we're going to try to figure out how much mass of water is sitting above this uh, this piston so from our two equations force equals uh, k times change of x and force equals mass times gravity we can set them equal to each other and say that mass mass times gravity equals the force constant times the change of x. And we just got to figure out what the mass is. And so we have this pressure thing and it's we're supposed to imagine it that it's a it's a disk. And above this disk is this column of water all the way above it. And so the column of water is equal to a certain height or a depth. We're going to call it a height, but it's really a depth in the water times the radius of this thing squared times pi. So it's the surface area of this times the height is going to equal the the volume. And we can find out the mass so because mass divided by volume equals density. And so we can we can figure out the mass by multiplying the volume by the density. So we can say that that mass equals of a density times volume. So we can replace that over here to say the density times the volume times the gravity equals k times the change of x. And then we have to go a step further because we want to know how deep it is. So we have to e exchange the volume equation for, uh, for this right here. So we get that the density times the height times the radius squared times pi equals the uh, the force constant times the change of x. And so let me move all this out of the way and we we need to solve for for the height so we can say that the height equals k times the change of x over the density times times the radius squared times pi. And we know what um, the de the density of water is uh, is defined as 1000 kilograms per cubic meter and so we we just have to go ahead and look at um, everything else and so it gives us the it gives us a few things in the equation it gives us the force constant so we know what k equals k is equal to 1080 and we know that the the change of x it says 7 uh, 0.75 centimeters so that's going to be 0 0.0075 meters and we know that the the density of water is equal to one we'll say 1000 kilograms per cubic meter the radius of this of this disk it says is 1.4 centimeters so we're going to say 0 0.014 meters and we of course pi is 3.14 and actually, there's one thing really critically that we we left out whenever we were solving for the um, for the height. We left out the the gravity in our equation. So let's just stick gravity in there, and then gravity will be right there. And that line needs to go. 
So if we throw gravity back in our equation, we, we know that gravity is equal to 9.8. Then when you solve this, you plug in all your numbers. So you, you have 1,000, 9.8, uh, 0.014 squared, 3.14, 0 0.0075 and 1080. When you plug all these in your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.34299 meters. And if you left out gravity like I just about did, you probably got an answer of 13.161. So, uh, and you divide that answer by 9.8, you'll get that.